Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing the camera equipment that I use to make my YouTube videos. If you're new to this channel, I'm Janet. I used to be a storyboard artist at Disney, but I quit my job in order to become an independent artist. I make art, business, and filmmaking content here on YouTube. At the time of filming this video, I am at 6,700 subscribers. I started doing YouTube full time in February of this year, so I have a pretty good perspective of what kind of camera equipment a beginner needs or if you are a creative or an artist. I'll share with you the very first camera I ever used to record videos here on YouTube and I'll show you what setup that I have now and I'll include the extra lighting, audio, tripod equipment that I had been using up until I upgraded. I will put all the links in the description box down below if you want the same setup as me. Let's get started. When I was first starting out on YouTube, all I used was the Sony RX100 Mark V and a 128GB SD card. I did a lot of research beforehand. I looked at a bunch of different cameras and I found the Sony RX100 was the perfect camera for my needs. I actually would have just used my phone, but I was already taking a lot of Instagram photos, stories, Instagram videos on it, so I wanted a camera that was just dedicated to making YouTube videos. But I knew I didn't want a big DSLR camera. I knew I was going to be doing a lot of vlogging on top of these types of talking head videos So I needed something that was lightweight enough to carry around with me, but also still pretty high quality I also knew I was going to be doing a lot of overhead shots to record myself drawing So I really needed something that was lightweight It has a nice flip out screen so I can see myself and I like the price I was also just starting out. I wasn't ready for a big expensive DSLR camera also something most youtubers aren't going to tell you is the more expensive the camera, the more expensive all the accessories are going to be that you're going to need with it. If I had gotten a DSLR camera, I would have needed to buy lenses, audio equipment, bigger, more expensive tripods, expensive rigs for those nice overhead camera shots that I wanted to do. Getting a pretty decent quality point and shoot camera was perfectly enough to get me started making YouTube videos. Eventually, I upgraded to the Sony RX100 Mark VII because it has a mic jack, it shoots in 4K, and it has a secret little talent that I'll get to later. At the time, my boyfriend Vincent and I were doing Inktober, so we were recording ourselves doing these long time lapses of our drawings. We needed another camera so that we both could be drawing and working at the same time instead of wasting time and taking turns using the same camera, but we weren't ready for a DSLR yet nor did we really have the money for it. Since we liked the RX100 so much, we decided to get another one. And let me tell you, this is the little camera that could. I've filmed vlogs on it, I've taken flat lays for Instagram, i filmed podcasts on it, and so much more. I used this little mic on it at first. Here, let me show you. It's so cute. And I still do use the setup for vlogging. Um, it's really ac actually pretty good quality actually let me just show you how it sounds so this is what it's like vlogging with this rx100 mark 7 with the tiny little mic this is what it sounds like it's really not half bad if i say so myself <laughs> so as you can see it can still sound a little echoey and it picks up the sound of the cars passing by outside not exactly what i want when i'm doing these types of talking head videos so eventually i put this cheap lavalier mic on it instead and voila the sound of my videos changed drastically let me show you so this is what the mic sounds like with the lavalier mic it's i think it sounds all so much better than the other tiny little mic. I also ended up buying a little battery adapter for it. Since I was recording a lot of videos, podcasts, and time lapses, I didn't want to keep replacing the battery or remembering to charge them. And since I mostly just make videos from home, I could just plug in the battery adapter and record for it as long as I want. And now for the secret that I mentioned earlier. This camera can bypass the 30 minute record limit. For those who don't know, most cameras have a 30 minute record limit and for most people, this isn't really a problem. Since I'm someone who makes a lot of drawing videos and podcasts, I wanted a camera that could record for hours at a time. 
A problem I had with the RX100 Mark V was when I was doing my Inktobers, the camera would automatically shut off when it hit the 29 minute, 59 second limit. When I'm working and drawing and in my flow state, I don't always notice when that happens. So there'd be times when I'd spend hours drawing and when I'm done, I look up and I realize the camera didn't record any of it. The RX100 Mark VII doesn't do that when you have the setting turned off. All you have to do is turn off the setting where you turn off the auto turn off function to protect the battery from overheating. Honestly, I've never had the battery overheat on me and I've recorded for hours on end. It's great for anyone who is thinking about recording time lapses, podcasts, or to get you to like the video because it helps the algorithm. For lighting, I used natural lighting at first. It's actually what I used for my viral why I quit my job at Disney video. I actually prefer using natural light the most because it's actually the most flattering for most people. Especially if you don't know how to light things properly, natural light is easy. All you really have to do is sit in front of a window and the sun does all the hard work for you. For some of my very first time-lapse drawing videos, I used these desk lamps that I had, but the videos always turned out pretty underlit. I knew one of the first things I needed to purchase was proper lighting if I wanted to maximize the amount of time I could record. So I invested in these softbox lights for these talking head videos and LED lights for my drawing videos. Lights can vary from as little as $30 to thousands of dollars for professional lighting equipment. Some YouTubers like using things like ring lights, but I don't actually like the look of that music video ring in the eyes, if you know what I'm talking about. The softbox look to me is much more flattering and natural. For my drawing desk, I opted for LED lights because they're smaller, so I could attach them to these monopods. This is actually my DIY version of the pricey Elgato setup that a lot of Twitch streamers like to use. I bought everything during a Black Friday sale, so for less than half the price of one Elgato setup or whatever it was, I was able to buy three lights. All you really need is these clamps, the monopods, a camera ball head, and these lights. You can actually get camera screws to screw the lights in, but I wanted to be able to use the monopods as monopods for a camera as well. As for tripods, I actually used equipment that I had amassed over time. I had bought this great old tripod at a garage sale for $1. I know, it's a steal. And for the other tripods, I basically took them off Vincent. He already had these tripods laying around. You honestly don't really need a tripod if your budget is super tight. I've seen just stack their camera on a bunch of books or boxes on their desk and that seems to work just fine. If you are looking to buy a pretty cheap tripod, I would recommend getting a Gorillapod because it's pretty versatile and you can get creative attaching it to pretty much anything. For the overhead rig, I bought a microphone stand, a clamp, a ball head, and a smartphone clamp, and a few camera screws to put it all together. And I put a sandbag or sometimes a tote bag with some weights or some water bottles at the other end in order to balance it. There are a lot of other ways to do this, but this was the cheapest way for me. These are the camera equipment that I used up until recently. Once I got monetized and I started making more money with my art business, it was finally time to invest in a nice DSLR camera. I knew I wanted to make more cinematic videos like this custom Jordans video that I made a few weeks back, so I opted for a camera that could shoot 4K in full frame. I also invested in an ultra wide lens for when I'm vlogging outdoors, a monitor since the screen doesn't flip out a Rode mic for decent quality audio, and of course, a battery adapter. This setup is pretty pricey, so my advice for people who are just starting out is to go as cheap as possible. Only invest in nicer equipment when you start making money from YouTube and when you figure out what it is you truly want to do on YouTube. A phone is literally all you need to start making YouTube videos. For example, when I'm making my TikTok videos, sometimes I even prefer my phone footage over my RX100 footage. The iPhone also records audio pretty darn well. Better than your average camera, actually, since your phone is meant to be talked into. The only extra thing that I strongly recommend you get is lighting, since bad lighting can make even the best quality camera look awful. 
And if you do get something like the RX100 Mark VII, I highly recommend you learn how to shoot manually. Most beginners who use these little point-and-shoot cameras are using movie mode, which basically does all the work for you. The in-camera software changes the settings as you film, so it makes it so easy. Basically, even a baby could do it. But you'll always wonder why your footage doesn't look as good as someone else with a nicer, more expensive camera. And most of the time, you will be getting footage that is over or underexposed, or it'll look yellower or bluer than it should. That actually has less to do with the quality of your camera and everything to do with how you use your camera. To learn how to set white balance, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Let me actually show you how big of a difference it could look. I'm currently recording on auto. This is not exactly the best image. It's Everything's a little bit overexposed. I look super shiny. So let me show you what this camera looks like when I do everything on manual and make sure all the exposure and everything is properly correct. And the colors are a little bit off too. So in three, two, one. Here I properly expose the image. I no longer look so shiny. The colors are a little bit more accurate and I created a color profile so that it makes it so much easier to color grade. So yeah, that is the power of shooting on manual. Having a nice camera is not a shortcut to making better videos. A camera like a pencil is just a tool. Some people can only draw stick figures with a pencil, while others can make beautiful illustrations. A camera is exactly the same thing. What you're capable of doing with it just depends on your skill. I know all of this can sound pretty intimidating, but Honestly, I learned all this pretty recently myself. I actually made that exact mistake when I first got the Sony a7R. I started filming videos like I always did, using the same bad lighting techniques that I always used before, and I quickly realized there was a lot of learning I needed to do in order to use my new camera to the fullest potential. So over the past few weeks, I taught myself how to set the proper ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. I learned how to light things properly this time. What ended up happening is with my newfound skills, the footage that I still take on my little RX100 looks amazing, better than it ever looked before. Again, if you're interested in any of the equipment that I talked about, the links are in the description box down below. If you'd like to support what I do, check out honeyandapson.com for my merch. Jingle my bells if you want more art, business, and filmmaking content, and don't forget to dare to dream.